Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing really well and welcome back to a brand new studio vlog. If you're new here, I'm Shannon and I'm a pet portrait and wildlife artist and I specialise in coloured pencils. I make vlogs here on YouTube all about the process, what I go up to on a daily basis and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, I'm coming to you today on a brand new vlogging camera. I finally caved and I treated myself to a proper camera. I usually film these videos on my iPhone but because I've got a trip to Kenya coming up up in a few weeks and I wanted to make the videos as good as possible I actually got myself a proper camera so I'm filming now on the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and I've not filmed like a proper vlog with it yet so this is very much a video to test <laughs> the camera out and just yeah see how it is because I don't want to go to Kenya and just use it straight off the bat there I want to make sure I know how to use it properly so I've got a little microphone and I'm testing out the sound quality see what it's like but yeah let me know what you think of the quality Quality. I think it's a little bit of a wider shot than the iPhone as well so you can get more in the background and it's got a little gimbal on it so you can set it to like track your face and your movements and I just thought that would be really handy for filming vlogs while I'm out in Kenya because I just don't want to risk like missing anything good while I'm there and it's really convenient to just get out so yeah I'm really pleased with this camera and I'm excited to see how it is. I actually went hiking up in the Lake District at the weekend and I filmed some footage that was my first time properly testing the camera out so I will insert that footage now and see what it's like. <laughs> You'll find Gandalf. how tiny the camera is it's that teeny tiny little bit at the top there and it has a little tripod so I can easily like stand it up when I'm out and about but I just thought because it's quite small and inconspicuous it won't be like really in everyone's face when I'm trying to vlog so I just thought it'd be really good for the trip and good for continuing vlogging at home after the trip as well so yeah I hope you like the footage yeah I'm really excited to just like experiment with it you can also film vertical as well you literally just flip the little screen that's on here so it's really cool and I'm sure I'll get lots and lots of use out of it so this is like the face tracking thing where it follows your face around I just think that is so cool I'll try not to move too much though because I can imagine it might get a little bit annoying if I'm moving too much I did want to ask a question about the vlogs actually so for those of you that watch like every vlog that I post maybe you're a regular watcher would you rather I did vlogs fewer and further between and then the content that I share is a lot fresher and there's something new and completely different in each vlog or do you not mind me sharing them more often and maybe some of the stuff is similar because I'm still working on the same drawings and doing like similar things would you rather I share them more often with similar content or less often with like fresh content? I suppose that is the question because obviously a lot of the Patreon drawings that I'm doing are still the same because it takes me like weeks and weeks to do a full one. So yeah, I suppose like I'm just asking, is it going to get a bit boring? Yeah, I've had a really nice couple of weeks since I last did the previous vlog. I've finally, <laughs> finally, I think, sorted that website problem out that I was having. 
I was on the phone to Wix and I had the loveliest, loveliest lady that was helping me. She was called Simone and we were on the phone, no joke, for about an hour. She was talking me through each step of what I needed to do on the website and she sent me a video. But we were also talking about art because she has a shop selling her own homemade watercolours. So I thought that was really cool. And it was just nice that like we both had an interest in art. So yeah, she helped me and then I spoke to a few other people and I finally figured out what I need to do. So I do need to get on with some website work at some point this week. I was struggling with these pages where I show all of the Patreon tutorial info and I have these little parts at the bottom where I link to each video on Patreon and I was really struggling to get them to show differently because I've set up Wix dynamic pages which is a whole whole other video in itself really but um, basically if anyone else is struggling with this I know it's quite a niche thing if you want to show different information on each of your dynamic pages you have to insert a rich content box and like link it to the appropriate places but it's very niche so I don't imagine many of you will be having the same issue as me but if you do get in touch because I might be able to help you but yeah that is all sorted now and I cannot thank the customer support enough for helping me with that because I was really confused it felt very complex but now I know what I'm doing it feels a lot more simple so yeah so I need to get on with the next part of my sunflower tutorial for Patreon now. And then this afternoon, I'm actually going to do a little portfolio tour. It was um, a really lovely suggestion actually on my last vlog that I do a portfolio tour. So basically go through my art folder and just share everything that's in there. And I thought that was a really nice idea because I have stuff that's sat in there that has been in there for years and it would just be nice to show you what sort of stuff I've got. So before that, I'm gonna do my tutorial, so let's do it. So this is the current progress of my sunflower. So I've done all the middle bit and it's starting to look a lot more like a sunflower. So I'm gonna start on these green leaves today and see how far we get. But yeah, I think it's looking really good. Now that we've got this middle bit, it's looking a lot more like a sunflower. And I do love the fact that we're actually in sunflower season. So it feels very like apt to be doing the sunflower at this time, but yeah. I'm really pleased with it. Curious to see how much detail this camera picks up, but I think it's I think it's quite good. So let's get on with the next part. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to part 5 of the sunflower tutorial. I hope you're having a lovely day and you're ready to crack on with this next part. So without further ado, let's get started. There we go, that is the next part of the sunflower tutorial finished. I feel like it looks really good, I'm really happy with these leaves. I feel like there's a lot of detail that can go into them because they're so spiky and textured. So it's really been a fun one to draw this, so yeah, that is that part finished. So this massive thing is my art folder slash portfolio, whatever you want to call it. And I've had this since I was in college doing fine art A-levels. We had to buy like a kit of stuff and this was included. And I keep everything in here. So every drawing that I've ever done that I haven't sold or hasn't been a commission that I've sent to the client is still in this folder. So where do I even begin with this? Let's just start from the back. <laughs> I'll show you just how much stuff is in here. Can you see all that? <laughs> I'll start from the back and we'll just work our way to the front because I think my older stuff is in the back. So first up we have this pastel drawing. A little bit of fluff on it. So I think I did this, I want to say 2020 I did this and it's a pastel drawing of a barn owl and I've actually drawn the same barn owl twice because I did a Patreon tutorial in coloured pencils of a very similar image, not exactly the same, but very, very similar. And the reference photo was taken by Keith Bannister, who's a lovely local photographer that allows me to use his photos. So both of the photos were taken by him. But yeah, 
I just wanted to practice doing some pastel work and this was one of the first things that I did and to be honest I've not really done much pastel work since then but I do quite enjoy it. It's a lot messier than coloured pencils and I do feel like this has got a little bit smudged from being in my art folder but I'll just give you a little bit of a close up. I used pastel mat for this so yeah it was all good practice and maybe I should do something with it. I feel like it would need a little bit of like refining if I did. Seems a shame just to have it sat there but again I have a lot of things just sat in this art folder rotting away. <laughs> I'm going to show you the things that I've done that haven't gone so well as well just to show that like not everything's great. This is a horse that I did and I massively messed it up by pressing on too hard and sort of reaching the limit of the layers too quickly so yeah that's why I always say you need to start with a slightly lighter hand and build up as you go on but yeah that wasn't my best work so that should probably go in the bin. This is another one that I started again and it was a commission. To be honest I don't really know why I restarted that one because I think it looks quite good. <laughs> I obviously wasn't feeling it at the time but yeah I think it looks alright actually. I think again I sort of just pressed on a little bit too hard and sort of damaged the paper a little bit and couldn't get any more detail on top so yeah sadly another one that will probably go in the bin. So this one is a Christmas card design that I did and to be honest it's not my favourite one, I don't love it, I much prefer the polar bear that's standing up, wow it's gone really bright outside, I hope that lighting isn't too bad, I prefer the polar bear standing up to the baby one, I don't feel like I did enough on the face, so I don't hate it but I don't love it, um, I'll just give you a little bit of a close up of that. I used um, Saunders Waterford hot press watercolour paper for this and to be honest that's not my favourite paper, it's a little bit spongy so I just find it quite difficult to get like pigment down, I don't know, it's a little bit difficult so yeah it was good practice though and to be honest now I'm looking back at these old drawings where I used the heavier weight paper, it's making me want to go back to it because I find it like too easy to bend the 300 GSM paper, this is 640 but it's really thick and sturdy and I often manage to get little pencil marks on my drawings which is so annoying. I have so many that are like that but I suppose I can't just write them off because I've accidentally marked the paper. This one is a tutorial that I did for the fundamentals tier and it's of three dog noses so it was a dog nose tutorial and that was one of the first ones that I did so that's really nice looking back and seeing that in there. It is like going back in time going through my art folder and looking at all of these but I think that one was my favourite nose that I did there so yeah that is on the fundamentals tier of my Patreon. This is a hedgehog drawing that I did with some autumn leaves which is actually quite like seasonal as we're heading into autumn now and yeah I loved the leaves on this drawing. I think I could do the fur and the spikes on the hedgehog a little bit better now but the leaves I really really was happy with those. I do need to do another hedgehog drawing at some point. I'm actually doing a hedgehog workshop at Barton Grange in October and I'm really pleased that it's sold out so I've got eight people coming a uh, fully booked class so yeah we'll draw in like a little focus section of a hedgehog which will be really nice obviously hedgehogs are really popular especially at this time of year so this is another one that I've started so this is another one that I started and didn't finish it's a fox and yeah maybe I need to carry on with that because I feel like it could be quite nice I really I'm feeling this thicker paper kind of want to go back to it I think I might do a Jackson's order at some point this week and order some thicker sheets for my future commissions. I also want to order some pastel mat to try coloured pencil on because I've got a commission coming up where I'm doing a background and I'd quite like to try some pan pastels so yeah that was another one that sadly didn't get finished. <laughs> There's no rhyme or reason to the order in which I'm pulling these drawings out, like they're not in chronological order of when I drew them. So this one is one of my first ever coloured pencil drawings and I remember doing this while I was at uni, I was in third year, 
living in a house in Headingley in Leeds and I remember doing this on my bed on a sketchbook and yeah it's a little sausage dog. I did it in Prismacolor coloured pencils and I think it's a Bristol paper. It's very very smooth. I remember it being a green sketchbook Bristol board or Bristol paper. I can't fully remember. If I find it I will pop it on the screen now but yeah that was one of my first drawings and I feel like I've improved a lot since then but I also feel like I got the hang of it quite quickly. Um, it was just something that I really enjoyed doing and I was doing commissions at the time as well. This one was just like a little practice one. So yeah, that's what I used to do, a little A4 commission like that. And it would have cost £50, I think I charged while I was at uni. So £50 for a commission. <laughs> I've obviously increased my prices a lot since then, but I've also improved a lot. So it's all relative. So this is a YouTube tutorial that I did. This was I want to say my first ever YouTube drawing series and it's a Labrador and you can still go and do the tutorial if you want to. It's like a 10 part or something, it's quite a long one but it's all free and you don't need to pay for the tutorial, you just need the supplies to do it. So yeah, I think I've definitely improved a lot since then as well. I feel like I was good at like the detail areas but the fur... I think I've improved on my fur quite a lot and it just shows like how much you can actually grow in the space of a few years because if I did this again now I feel like it would look a lot lot different but there's also nothing wrong with it like it is it's fine it's it's good as it is but yeah you, you're always improving and I do get a lot of lovely comments still on this tutorial so yeah you can go and check that out if you would like to draw this one as well. Oh, this one is a little wren that I started and again, didn't finish. I think I also pressed too hard on this one and ooh, there's like a little bit of damage actually to some of the wren like around there. But yeah, I don't know what happened with this one. I think I wasn't too pleased with this area, but I mean, that's just me being really fussy. Feel like we're all very critical of ourselves but I would like to do another wren at some point because I think they're stunning and they're like really cute little dainty birds and I would like to draw another one but I think I wasn't too pleased with the bottom bit as well but now looking at it I'm like there's nothing wrong with it I was just being just being fussy so I never finished that one. Ah oh, so this one is something completely different so I did some wedding invites for my cousin and this is a little drawing of her venue. So I did it in fine liner and yeah, it's a little bit different than what I usually do, but I actually quite enjoyed it. I'm not gonna lie, drawing buildings isn't my favorite thing to do. We did a whole project on buildings when I was at school for GCSE art. And my teacher used to always laugh because he knew how much I hated drawing buildings. But there's just something about all the straight lines and I don't know, I like drawing things that are a bit more organic I think but yeah I quite enjoyed that I didn't hate it and I think it turned out quite nice in the end so yeah something a little bit different this is another patreon tutorial this was an advanced one and it's of an Australian shepherd so yeah a really really fun tutorial that and it was I think the first one where I added a little bit of grass in if I remember rightly and this was actually one of my patrons uh, reached out to me and suggested that we draw an Australian Shepherd and gave me some references that a friend had. So yeah, this was one of their dogs that I drew. This was another fun tutorial. So that was a Patreon tutorial and it was doing loads of different fur textures and I actually have done a YouTube tutorial which is like a shortened version of this. Three different fur types, three different techniques and I go through step by step how to draw each one. So that is on the fundamentals tier if you are struggling with how to draw fur. I do get a lot of requests to do light, like white fur so maybe I'll do a focus tutorial again at some point whether it's on YouTube or what but I do get quite a lot of requests for that I'll just show you up close but yeah I do have a YouTube tutorial on that as well so this was another fur textures tutorial that I did but this one has gone 
really weird. It looks like it's mouldy, but I think it's just like the pencil is smudged because I did layer quite a lot of dark pencil on this one. So no idea what's happened to that, but hey ho, how bizarre. Let's try and erase it. Mm. Yeah, I think it's just pencil. This one's got a little bit smudged as well, but this is one of my first ever Patreon tutorials. It's a little raccoon and again I feel like I could do this a lot better now. I've improved a lot since then but everyone's on a journey and your first tutorial and your most recent one aren't going to be of the same level. So yeah people still do this one though so they obviously still enjoy it but that was one of my first ever tutorials. Now this I didn't end up doing anything with. It's actually quite a nice piece. It's a kingfisher sat on some berries and again this is from one of Keith Bannister's references and I don't know what it was that I didn't like about this. I think again I, I pressed on too hard and the colours are a little bit too like garish for me but then I don't know, looking at it now, I'm like, there's not really that much wrong with it. Like, I'm just, I was clearly just a perfectionist back then, more so than I am now, I think. But yeah, Kingfisher drawing. Maybe I should put a mount on this and try and sell it as an original. Yeah, I think I actually edited two references together for this. I took a Kingfisher from a different reference and added it onto the little berry twigs so had a little bit of a play around on that one but I don't hate it I don't love it I'm sort of a bit indifferent to it this is one of my favorite drawings that I've ever done and it is my little owl drawing and for some reason whenever I've done like craft fairs or sold anything online this one doesn't do that well like I don't sell that many greeting cards or prints or anything I sell some but yeah I feel like it's one that I love but maybe isn't like a really popular uh, one so yeah I really loved that drawing and it was one of the first drawings where I felt like my style and my sort of drawing abilities had improved so I'll just give you a little bit of a close-up but yeah that was another one of Keith Bannister's references and on Fabriano a lot of these older drawings were on Fabriano hot pressed watercolour paper like the Kingfisher, all the tutorials, I always used to use that paper and I miss it so much. I just wish that I could get hold of this exact same paper because I would never move away from it. It's just, it was perfect. <laughs> Sad times. Okay, this is one of my first ever wildlife drawings that I did in 2018 and I designed this for Christmas cards and looking at it now, I'm like, wow, there wasn't really that much detail or anything in it but they did really well the christmas cards did really well so yeah it was obviously popular amongst customers but i don't even know what paper this is this is just some random watercolor paper i think it's not anything that i use now i think it was just you know when you go into an art shop and just buy a random pad of paper it was that kind of thing so it was very textured and i think i did struggle with it but yeah gosh this sun is really like in and out today but this is another YouTube tutorial it's a little bunny and again it's a free tutorial so I will link to that if you're interested in going and doing that but I think this was a six-parter so it was a little bit shorter than the Labrador one wow ugh this this sun it's been so grey and miserable and now that I'm filming it's gone really bright you can go and check that out if you want to draw the little bunny this is another Christmas card design that I did back in 2018 it's the same paper as the robin one and it's of a little french bulldog that i randomly found the image on like a stock photo website and very random not really my style now doing the little like hats and stuff but i see other people do it really well and it like really suits them but i don't know i just i feel like this isn't really me now yeah i've improved a lot since then i think there's a lot of random purples and stuff that i haven't blended in very well but <laughs> that was an older drawing so yeah, it's nice to look back and sort of see how far you've come because I think it's easy to like beat yourself up and compare yourself to other people and think, oh, I'm not doing very well. But the only person you should really compare yourself to is yourself. So I look back at your older stuff and if you've improved, then you're doing really well. Yeah, another oldie, one from the archive. 
Oh, this is a drawing of my cat, Charlie, which I really need to finish. I might actually try and finish this for Christmas for my mum and dad this year or something. Probably shouldn't have said that though, because I think they watch my videos, so they'll, they'll know what they're getting for Christmas. But yeah, I do really need to finish that. I did this at a craft fair Christmas time a couple of years ago, and I wanted to do a live drawing and sort of get people coming over and like interested in my stall by doing that. And yeah, I just thought I would do my cat and I really need to finish it. It would, just, it would be a shame not to finish this. It's such a good picture of him as well. So yeah, I need to do that because there is a portrait of the other two cats. So I need to do one of Charlie. That's reminded me actually, it's good going through all my stuff. This is a tree branch tutorial that we did on Patreon. This is Saunders Waterford hot pressed again. So I really liked the paper when I did this drawing and I was raving about it. And oh, this is my new favorite, but then I started doing animal drawings and I didn't love it. So I think this one is good for more botanical pieces. For wildlife and animals, it's not my favourite. I can't seem to get on board with this paper, but I really loved doing this tutorial. I think it turned out really well. So that is on the fundamentals tier, I want to say. So this is a wildlife piece that I just, again, never finished. It's a grouse. Yeah, I think it looked really good, so I don't know why I didn't finish it. But again, I used to just press on way too hard, and I don't know if you can see. The colour is just so over-pigmented. Like I, I used to just destroy the paper with how hard I pressed. I'm naturally quite heavy-handed, so I've had to really force myself not to be more recently. But yeah, another one that just never got finished. So we're moving on to more recent drawings now and this is a snake, snake head tutorial that I did on Patreon. It's on the fundamentals tier and it's quite a recent one that I did and it's using Strathmore Bristol Vellum 300 series paper and yeah not really much else to say on that because I have been sharing it quite recently but um, I think it would make a nice little drawing to frame that you know in like a little square mount. I think it'd look really good. Then we have my horse, which we've been doing on YouTube recently. So again, this is quite a new one as well. So I won't talk too much about this, but you can draw this along with me on YouTube for free. I think I've got six parts out now. Obviously there might be more parts out when I post this video, but another tutorial that you can do for free. This is another Patreon tutorial of a dragonfly. This wasn't my favorite one. I feel like, I don't know, I don't love it. I don't hate it and I don't love it. I would never take it down if I don't love it, but little dragonfly. I think it is actually quite useful for learning how to do the wings and the patterns and stuff. So I finally finished my giraffe piece that I have drawn to raise money for the East African Wildlife Society who will be visiting in Kenya later this month. Yeah, it would just be nice to give something back to them because they are gonna be letting us visit one of the projects and they'll be telling us all about it. So yeah, this piece is for sale and 100% of the proceeds will go to the East African Wildlife Society so I'll leave a link below if you're interested in purchasing it or you know someone that might be but yeah I really like how this one turned out the reference is by Andy Morphew and I just love it I think it's a lovely piece it's 12 by 12 inch nice size yeah I'm really happy with how that went it's on Bockingford hot press watercolour paper which I don't think I'll be rushing to use again but it was okay. I didn't hate it. I just didn't love it. So this is one of my favourite drawings that I've ever done. And it is my hair drawing. This is on Fabriano and it's quite a big one. So probably one of my biggest drawings that I've still got. But I absolutely loved drawing this one. And it's probably one of my best sellers that I have on my greeting cards and stuff. And uh, this reference was by Simon Lytton and I purchased the rights to it. So yeah, love that one. This is an original drawing that I did and it's on Arches Hot Pressed. And it's of a little blue tit and a coal tit. I just loved the leaves and the colors in this one. This is another Keith Bannister reference. I really love drawing this one. It would be nice to sell it, but I'm really annoyed that I managed to like dent the paper somewhere in the middle over here. So yeah, I think that is why the thinner, like lower weight paper can be problematic because it can dent really easily. I know that there are ways to stretch it out, but I just worry that I'm going to ruin the drawing if I try and do that. This is a little bunny that I did 
for a workshop earlier this year. I did a workshop at Patty's Barn in Cockerham and I taught everyone how to draw this bunny. So that is the practice drawing that I did and it was a lovely, lovely workshop. So yeah, really enjoyed that. That was on Strathmore Bristol Vellum. This is my other giraffe that I've done that was a Patreon tutorial on the advanced tier. Yeah, you can do the eye section on the fundamentals, but this one was also on Bristol Vellum. Another Andy Morphew reference, so that's quite a recent one that I've done, actually. Bristol Vellum, I'm sort of realising, isn't my favourite paper, but it's good for beginners, so I used it quite a lot for tutorials. These are two portraits that I really need to finish. They are presents for my cousin. I've not got round to finishing them yet, but I will finish them. Molly, if you're watching, I will. I've just been so distracted with other things, but they'll be worth the wait, hopefully. But yeah, that is Bertie and that is Bella. So need to crack on with that. Oh, wow, it's getting really hot now. I've got this thick fleece on and it's suddenly decided it wants to be summer again. This is another wildlife piece that I've not finished yet. So I have a little harvest mouse on a dandelion. And I really need to finish that because I do like that one. Oh, hello, Minnie. But yeah, that's another Keith Bannister reference. Hello, hey, say hello. Say hello. <laughs> She's honestly terrified of people. This is a wildlife piece that I did of a red squirrel. Again, another Keith Bannister reference. I do use a lot of his pictures. So yeah, a lot of these are his references, but really cute one. That one's quite a popular greeting card and print actually. This is a kingfisher. Ooh. Honestly, this... This is a Kingfisher that we did on Patreon. Yeah, this one is probably one of my most popular uh, designs and one of my most popular tutorials as well, I think. The only thing is, I don't know what's happened here, but there's like a little mark on it. So I'm a bit apprehensive to try and sell this as an original, but I don't know if that would put people off. I suppose I could just do it at a discounted price, but that is one of my favorite drawings that I've ever done. Another Keith Bannister reference and I used Archie's hot pressed for that, which I probably wouldn't use again. It's not my favourite. It's a little bit too textured, I think, for me. I'm not going to show you every single little thing that's in my portfolio because I feel like I would be here all day. But I'll show you like most of the main bits. This is another Patreon tutorial. Sorry if the lighting's a bit funny. I've had to close the blinds a little bit because it's so sunny. But that was a spotted deer. I accidentally called it a fallow deer, which... A few people told me it's not a fallow deer, so I was like, I really wish I hadn't named it that now. But yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. I really enjoyed doing the antlers on this piece. That was another fun one. And this is when the Fabriano texture started to change. It went really textured and rubbish. And yeah, it's just never been the same since. I would be interested to try and like order another sheet or two and see what it's like now. But I've heard mixed things. Some people say it's back to how it was. Some people say it's the same that's that really textured horrible surface yeah sadly it's just not the same as it used to be this is another patreon tutorial little harvest mouse and that's quite a popular tutorial it's only a short one so nice and easy to get through okay i'm just gonna whip through all of these really quick because there's just so many so that's another patreon tutorial a pheasant turtle love that one Another pheasant, that one I just did as an original for like practicing. Tiger, that's a Patreon tutorial. Don't know why there's a random mount in there. Snow leopard. I couldn't think what this was called then. A hummingbird. <laughs> Another Patreon tutorial. Red squirrel in the snow, also on Patreon. Mum and baby koala. A cow. Another Patreon one. Oh, the last few are all Patreon ones. <gasps> what is that? No. What is that? <gasps> That's a little duckling. What on earth is that mark on it? This is a YouTube tutorial. I'm going to try and get this off. It's on my elephant as well. No. Managed to get it off as much as I could. So that is a duckling that I've done in graphite and that is also a YouTube tutorial. This is a Patreon one and I can't believe there's a mark on this. It's like a little mark just there. I think I need to find a new way of storing all these because we can't be having that. Yeah, that's an elephant that I did on Patreon. One of my most popular tutorials, that one. Ooh, my cat is wriggling around like a little worm on the floor. <laughs> I 
but yeah this is a youtube tutorial that i did tabby cat and this is a patreon tutorial my donkey this is a christmas card design that i did of a fox looking for mice in the snow and this was like another one to sort of go with it in a similar style of a deer with some snow and i really liked the style of those actually this is my portrait of paddy that i did that's on youtube so it's the bull terrier tutorial and i did that on archie's hot pressed and yeah love that i need to get that framed actually something that i'll probably just never get around to doing and then i'll just show you two more so this is the other barn owl that I was talking about that was very similar to the pastel one that I did and this is a Patreon tutorial. Love that one. Really, really nice. Enjoyed doing that. And then this is my graphite rhino which is a YouTube tutorial. So that one was Strathmore Bristol Vellum. So yeah, I think that is more than enough to show you. I have a lot of stuff in that folder, like lots of little off cuts and little practice bits that I won't go through because there's just so much but yeah I hope you've enjoyed this portfolio tour I'm gonna get on with some more bits today and I will catch you up at some point by the way if you are interested in purchasing any of the originals that I've shown in this video I've got quite a few listed on my website but also you can send me an email or you know a message on Instagram or Facebook or whatever but yeah they will be available to purchase if you want. I have to try and get the marks off some of them, but yeah, most of them are fine and don't have marks on. I will catch you up at some point whenever. I just thought I would show you my daily morning checklist that I briefly spoke about in my last vlog. So I've been using Trello, which has been really helpful for getting organised. And I have this checklist that I untick every day and redo. So I've just done emails and Patreon. So I need to check Facebook, Instagram, all of my groups on Facebook. I don't have any orders because my shops are currently pretty much closed and I usually go through and check YouTube comments as well so I do that every morning before I sit down because otherwise I end up getting into like proper work straight away and then I just neglect all of these things so yeah really helpful. I also have another checklist of things that I need to do with like commissions that I'm working on, videos I'm working on, you know like more of the bigger tasks and then I've got like things that I really need to sort through when I get chance. So yeah, I use this for all of my organisation and it's been so helpful. I also have all of my important links, you know, if like anyone messages me asking where something's from, I have them all linked here. And I also have like subject requests for Patreon and YouTube and video topics. I just make notes of everything that I can think of on here. So it's just a good place where I can dump all of my thoughts and ideas and all of my information into one. So yeah, I highly recommend Trello if you're struggling to organise yourself. It's gone from absolutely chucking it down today to now sunshine and I can't see. How does the weather change so much in the matter of like half an hour? It's just bizarre. Today, I want to film like a Kenya prep video. So I want to go through some of the art supplies that we're taking and like things that we're packing for our travellers and yeah I just wanted to do a separate video prepping for Kenya so I might have to start that today because there's something that I need to do so that I can like finish it off before we go. So yeah I'm gonna do that and then I'll get on with the rest of my bits and bobs later. So Becca asked me to be on her podcast Life of an Entrepreneur so she's just posted the episode that I'm in. We did like a little chat over Zoom and we just answered some questions that um, we were asked on Instagram so if that's of interest to you go and check that out. It's always lovely chatting to Becca and I always watch every episode of this podcast so if you're like a, an aspiring artist and you want to leave your job or you want to make more of a career out of your art I definitely recommend going and having a listen to Becca's podcast. Okay I've filmed all of the bits that I needed to do for the Kenya preparation vlog today. I have got some other bits that I'm going to do but I'm going to film it over the space of the next two weeks and then I'll probably schedule it to go live on the day that we fly out because I don't want any of the travellers to see 
anything that we're doing and spoil like the surprise of the goodie bag and stuff. Not that it's like a big major deal, but I just want it to be like, I just want everyone to see it for the first time when we get there. So yeah, I am gonna now edit the sunflower tutorial and then I need to film the next part of the bold eagle tutorial and I'm going to a friend's house for my tea tonight they're kindly making a curry so that should be lovely it's my friend who has the dog that looks like Paddy that are like twins um, Dexter so I'll get to have Dexter cuddles and I'm hopefully seeing Paddy again this weekend as well so I'm really happy about that it's nice to be seeing a lot more of him recently so yeah I'm gonna get on with this anyway and stop babbling on and catch up later. Okay, so I'm gonna do the next part of the Bold Eagle tutorial for the advanced tier on Patreon. So thinking of doing like the rest of the body and then I can start on that wing or the tail feathers. I'm not sure yet. Maybe we'll do all of the body first. There we go. That is the next part finished. I feel like I was drawing for a long time then but I also had to wait for my battery to charge for the camera so I did a bit of secret commission work while I was waiting so it's now 10 to 5. Wow where has the day gone? I'm actually going out soon to have tea at my friend's house so I should probably do some last bits and then head out. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. It's been a little bit shorter in terms of how many days I've actually filmed, but that's because I've been filming the Kenya prep vlog and that is gonna be the next vlog that's coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. And then after the Kenya prep vlog, it's gonna be the actual Kenya vlogs. So there's gonna be so much exciting content coming up. So please make sure to give the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe to see more of the Kenya content. So yeah, exciting in times I can't believe we're going next week now so yeah thank you for watching again and I shall see you in the next one so bye for now mm -hmm.